Hey everyone, sorry it's been so long since I've posted a Microsoft Access tutorial. In short, I simply don't use it in my day-to-day -day activities at work anymore. They severely restricted who has access to client data, so I don't have those types of use cases to make examples of for you guys. However, if you have a question, I'm certainly still willing to uh, make a tutorial to answer that question, such as today's. So this is based upon the SQL tutorial that I've posted. I'll put a link at the end and in the description. And the question is, is when you're using an SQL command to create a table, can an end user, so not the DBA, but can an end user say what they want the name of the table to be? Short answer is yes, it's very easy. Now, those of you who are saying, well, why would you want to do that? Again, using a use case from work, there are production level tables, okay? And then there's a duplicate of those production level tables and that's used for reporting. That way, you're, if you're accessing those tables, you're not slowing down the actual workings of the company. Okay, so you have these duplicate tables that are being used for reporting. Well, if you're one of the people who have access to those tables and you say have a spreadsheet with like thousands and thousands of entries, you really don't want to run a query that's taking something locally from your computer, going across the network to a server back and forth times 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000. You're just going to lock your computer down. You're going you're gonna to slow down the network probably. And who knows, it might crash. So what you could instead do is you would upload that spreadsheet to that duplicate database that has the reporting tables in it. And that's why you'd want an end user to be able to name a table, because obviously they're going to name it for something that's meaningful to them. Now you do things to restrict access so other people don't access each other's tables and you use information that isn't valid and that kind of thing. But yes, so that's an example, that's a use case where an end user would name a table because they're making a temporary table for the purposes of reporting or some kind of query that they're running. And then either they could delete it themselves or you could have a process that say after seven days, the tables automatically delete that are uh, that our end user created. So what I'm about to show you is A, how to let the end user name the table, and then two, a way to flag the table so that you can then have a deletion routine run. I already showed you the SQL coding for deleting a table. So here's what we're going to do. This is the form that we would use in the uh, previous tutorials. So we're just going to go to view. We're going to go to design view. We're going to click on the button and as you call, if you click on the button, that's an event and the onclick event runs an event procedure. Now, for those of you who did not watch the other tutorials, please do not get intimidated by this because precisely zero of this is running. Every single one of these is remarked out. See the little apostrophe that tells you it's remarked out. It is not running. So those of you who did watch, you know what these do and so you're not going to get intimidated. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use a variation of this one down here. So let's take this and then we'll explain it. So we're going to say, do command. So this part is VBA. So this is Visual Basic. And then we're going to say run SQL. And now the rest is going to be the actual SQL verbiage. It's going to be SQL syntax. So let's remark this out because we need one bit of information before we can use this. So we'll save that. Okay, what do we need? We need to add a control here. So what we're going to do, we are going to, on the design tab, click on text box. Just drag this and open this. Take this, put it up here. I'm not going to make this pretty. Like I said, I do not care about layout. You can do that on your own time, not looking to waste your time. So we'll just say enter table name. And again, since this is just a label, you can use spaces here because if you've watched my other tutorial, I talk about not using spaces in field names and column names and table names but you can use spaces in labels. That's just a label. It's not functionally used for anything. This, however, is text five, and that's what we need for that other, for that um, SQL command. So, so text five.
Okay, so what is this saying? Again, it's saying we're going to run a command. The command is going to be SQL. So that means it's going to be expecting quotation marks and the proper syntax for SQL. So create table. And then we're going to say what the name of the table is. So we're concatenating here. We're concatenating this to this. So if you haven't seen this before, what this is saying is you're starting from a general and you're drilling down to specific. You're saying, I want to reference something in my forms. Okay, which form? Well, form one, if you see over here, it's called form one. Okay, what do you want to access on form one? Text five, as we just said, text five is the name of the object we just created. So what you're saying is create table and then the name of the table will be whatever is in text five. And it's really that simple if I did not forget anything. So let's run this and we'll just call this testing again and run it. Testing again. So just like that, you've given your end user the ability to create a table. And again, your end users, this will all be locked down. This will all be locked down so they won't be able to use the normal tools. You're just going to have them do everything through the forms. That way you can control what they do, where they do it, how they do it. Okay, so that allows them to create a, a table and then you can use the other SQL commands that I showed you as far as how to add fields and then put values into those fields and that kind of thing. All right, so the next step is I said I wanted to show you how you could also flag this so it gets auto deleted. So how would you flag it? Well, what you can do is you can append something else to it that they have no control over. And so again, I am referencing that and let's just call this TMP short for temp. So watch what happens this time. So again, it's you're concatenating the plus sign. This is not a calculation. You're concatenating. You're, you're combining this to this. Let's go ahead and run it. And we'll leave the same testing again. And now testing again, TMP. So what would you do? You would have a query that would automatically run or you know SQL command that automatically run and deletes that table. And you can reference the other tutorials. Like for instance, you can see here, actually, sorry, this one drop table. So if you want to delete a table, it's drop table. And then you would just likewise put in a name there. Maybe you would use a wild card and um, delete anything that has TMP in it is really what I was thinking. So you wouldn't necessarily have the name, full name of the table. You'd simply look for any table that contains TMP. And again, you'd have to make sure that your reporting tables or your permanent tables don't use whatever indicator you used here. So I think that's about it. I believe that answers their question because they wanted, again, to be able to have an end user name a table using an SQL statement. So I believe that answers their question. And like I said, you can also flag it so that you can then have it deleted using some kind of automated process. And that automated process could use the drop table if you're doing everything with SQL. Okay, so I think that should about do it. I hope that you found this useful and please do enjoy the rest of your day.